Lazy 2 brings two new dimensions to After Effects Eden. It comes equipped with a bunch of new features like an updated UI UX, a library of preset curves, the ability to save and edit your own curves, and the ability to ease keyframes in a new dimension. At its core, Lazy is a tool that allows users to displace layers and keyframes across their timeline along a Bezier curve. As you can see, we are presented with this big graph editor here right in the middle of Lazy. This is going to be where you construct your Bezier curve for displacing your layers and keyframes along. This is a big improvement from the previous version of Lazy. It's much easier to use, much more fluid and dynamic, and uh, is, makes for a really great experience. In the bottom left, we have this toggle, which toggles between ascending and descending. When you highlight keyframes, you're going to be presented with this option of pinching, which we'll go over here in a second. To the right of that, you have your frame input box. To the right of that, you have a reset button, which will reset any of your keyframes or layers back to a linear position. So if we were to do a distribution here, select all those keyframes, and then hit this uh, reset button, it will reset them all to be linear again. To the right of that, we have an apply button, and this is new to Lazy2. It allows us to just click this button when we are ready to apply our curve to the layers or keyframes selected. Up top, we have a list of different presets and the ability to also create your own presets. This is an update button for any uh, preset you currently have selected. So if you change the curve a little bit, you can then press this button and it will update that curve. Um, to the right of that, we have a delete button, which will delete any preset you have currently selected. Below that, we have a toggle in this panel that allows us to toggle between starting the displacement at the first keyframe or at the playhead. So if we were to choose at the playhead, we can go back here and we'll select all these layers, hit this button. So now it will start the displacement at the uh, playhead. And this third panel down here, we have a little bit of information about Lazy, including what version you are on and where it was created. Distributing layers and keyframes inside of Lazy is a pretty easy process. As you can see, I have this text animation going on here with all these different characters coming up at the same time and also changing from 0% opacity to 100% opacity. Now let's use Lazy to distribute these layers along our timeline using a predetermined Bezier curve. I want this to ease out and ease in. Next, make sure that you have the correct uh, ascending and descending toggle selected. In this case, we want our animation to be descending. Adjust your distribution time. I'm going to leave mine at 25 frames and then just hit the apply button. As you can see, Lazy has easily distributed all of these layers along our Bezier curve that we've constructed. So the first few characters are coming in almost by themselves. And then as we gradually move along here in our timeline, you can see that the middle characters are coming up almost at the same time as the next one. They're offset only a tiny bit. And as we move further along this curve, and along our timeline, you can see that, again, we end this animation with the final characters coming up almost by themselves again in the timeline. Easing keyframes inside of Lazy is just as easy and provides a lot more flexibility. As you can see, I have this animation of this building going up, and all these animations are happening at the exact same time. It's pretty cool, but if we were to offset all these different keyframes, it would bring a lot more life into this animation. So let's go ahead and let's select all the keyframes in this timeline. That's a lot of keyframes and Lazy works across all these different layers. So now once we have all these different keyframes selected, let's construct our Bezier curve. Let's say we want this animation to ease in only. We're going to have a lot of animation going on at the beginning of this curve and then towards the end it's going to be more offset and more pronounced. So once everything's selected, let's make sure that we have the correct toggle for ascending and descending. And then since this is a longer animation and a lot of keyframes going on, I set my length to be around 80 frames. Now let's hit the apply button. All right, so Lazy has gone through and it's offset all of these keyframes along our Bezier curve. I mean, look at all those and it's all following that Bezier curve of easing in that we constructed. Let's take a little preview of what this looks like. So as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff happening at the beginning of this animation. All these different trees and assets are popping up. And then towards the end, we really get the pronounced um, scaling up effect on these windows. That really ends this animation quite well. 
a quick Command Z will undo all of those keyframes. Or if you want to hit this reset button that we talked about earlier, that will reset all the keyframes as well. This brings us to keyframe pinching. Keyframe pinching is a new feature in LazyTube that allows us to pinch keyframes together or further apart as we move along our Bezier curve. It's a really cool feature and we're calling it the third dimension of After Effects easing. Here's how to do it. So once I go ahead and select my keyframe sets here, we are presented with these new inputs in the Lazy interface. These are going to be used for pinching your keyframes together. The best way to pinch keyframes together is going to be in an ease out or ease in distribution. So in this instance, I'm going to be creating an ease in distribution. Let's drag this Bezier handle up here, and I'm going to click on this first box. Now as you can see, this second line is being pinched more closely together to the beginning of this curve than the end of this curve. And what this is going to do is it is going to pinch together these beginning sets of keyframes here. And as we go along this curve, they're going to get less and less pinched together till they're back to their normal distribution of length here. So let's go ahead and hit the apply button. All right, great. So you can see that we have the beginning sets of these keyframes fairly close to one another. And then as we move along our distribution here, these ending keyframes are at the uh, original distribution length that we originally had. And what this does, it really helps sell the effect that there's all this animation going on at the beginning, especially since all this stuff is happening much more quick than at the end of this distribution here. So let's do a little RAM preview. Awesome. So you can see so much stuff is going on at the beginning. We have all this stuff coming in, not only right on top of each other, but also the animations are happening fairly quickly. And as we progressively move along this curve and stuff is happening less and less frequently, the animations associated to those mm -hmm. keyframes are longer and longer apart. So you can start to see that this is another dimension of easing that we can really start putting into practice in After Effects. All right, let's finish this animation by doing the exact same thing to the right side. So all, all we have to do is select those keyframes, inverse our curve here, and then hit the apply button. Now that you've seen how to do an ease in type of pinch, let's talk about doing an ease out type of pinch. So the same principles apply here. We're going to select these keyframes. We're going to go into our graph editor, flip the curve around again. And in order to get rid of this pinching, all you have to do is click on the box and that'll get rid of that pinching. And in this instance, we want this to ease out. So we're going to drag our Bezier handle down like this, drag the other Bezier handle down again. And for this type of pinch, we're going to use this second box here. And this is going to pinch the top of the curve here. So we're going to use the 50% pinch again, or roughly around that. Now that we have the curve set up, all we have to do is hit the apply button. All right, so in this animation, we're going to see that the beginning animation is fairly drawn out, right? We have these keyframes that are spread apart fairly large, and they are offset in a pretty good amount. But as we move along this curve, they, the keyframes are going to get less and less spread out from each other, and they're also going to be happening more frequently. So to finish this up, let's do the exact opposite thing flip the curve around, hit the apply button. Now as you can see, we have the beginning of this animation happening fairly slowly. And then as we move along our curves here, the animations are going to happen more frequently and much quicker. In order to save your curve, let's say that you made one that you really like, you like the pinching on it, all you have to do is click on this drop down box, scroll up to the top, type in the name, and then click on this button that says create preset. Now as you can see we created this preset and if I ever wanted to adjust that preset all I would have to do is find it, click on it, and I can adjust it a little bit or do whatever I want with it. And I'm going to click this button which will update that preset. As you can see preset has been saved. And if you ever want to get rid of that preset all you have to do is hit this button and it will delete that preset. All right, that about wraps it up. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and you can see how Lazy can fit into your workflow. Go give it a try. This has been Danny with Plug and Play.